In this video, I'm gonna show you how you can build a real estate chatbot for your real estate business using services like VoiceFlow. And to show you how it works, I have this demo on the screen right now. This chatbot is great for any real estate business as it allows you to capture potential clients and leads on your website automatically. You can capture pretty much any kind of information you want from your prospects and you can have it automatically sent over to your CRM, your management system, your sales teams, whatever you want, all done automatically. This is definitely a must have if you're starting off in the real estate industry and you wanna get some warm prospects coming from your website. So I have this example on the screen here, which I wanna show you. You can see it first gives the user a message, hello, welcome to Modern Home Realty. Then it prompts the user with a question, are you looking to buy or sell? So I'll click on buy and you see it asks, great, we could totally help you find an amazing home. What locations are you thinking about? So we'll say somewhere in New York. And this chatbot uses AI to actually take the input the user gives you and customize it to fit a brand new prompt. So you can see it took this somewhere in New York Turned it into New York is a great place to move. And then asks, what's your budget for a home? We'll say 500K. I'm positive we can find you a house in your budget. Is there anything you're looking for specifically in a home? We'll say, we'll say three bedrooms, a pool and a deck. Then it goes through, it makes a list of requirements. The three bedrooms, a pool and a deck says, got it. Thanks for your information. Can you give me your first and last name? And what's a good phone number to reach out to you with? And a good email. Then it says, great. A team member will reach out with you shortly to get started on helping you buy a home. Or we can go the other route and click like sell and then it prompts the user for more information on their address then it asks the user how much they're looking to get for the property it says that's a great price range we could totally find a buyer with that and then what's your timeline for selling the home then it goes to the same name email and phone number information capture which you can then use these variables that the user inputs and send it to your sales team so they can instantly call the client and follow up on that warm lead and turn them into a client and hopefully a referral for your business in the future of how easy it was to buy or sell a home with your business so i hope you enjoyed that little demo but now let's get into the tutorial and how you can actually build this exact same chatbot for your own business but before we get into that my name's mike i help businesses save time and make more money with all these cool tools if you don't want to go through the hassle of building this chatbot and you want to learn about all the cool ways we can help your business grow and leverage all these cool tools go down the description and schedule a free consultation with me we can talk and chat and figure out the best way you can integrate these tools to make even more money than you do now so with that out of the way let's get into this tutorial so to start, if you're not familiar with what VoiceFlow is, basically one of my favorite software is for building AI powered chatbots that you can install and embed on your website to capture any kind of information, help the client with any kind of problem, and overall provide a better user experience for your clients and customers. So once you're signed in, you'll be over on the VoiceFlow dashboard and you can come to the top here and click on new assistant. We'll give it a name and we'll choose build AI assistant and click continue. For our channel, we use web chat, but you can also pick from Twilio, SMS, WhatsApp, and Teams, or if you wanna get really fancy, even use Alexa. And then once you're in the editor, it's time to get started. We'll start off by deleting everything that's inside the chatbot as we're not going to be needing any of this to start off with. We're gonna be building this from scratch. You can follow along with me. We'll start with this start chatbot and we'll go and we'll drag this out and that will give us the ability to pick a new logic event for where we want this chatbot to go. So to start, what we'll do is we'll head down to talk and we'll click on text. And what this will do is as soon as the chatbot is loaded and the user clicks on the button, it'll display this text. So we can enter our text in here. For this example, I'll use the one that I showed you in the demo, but we can say something like, hello, welcome to Modern Home Realty. That will display as one chat bubble. And then to display another one, what we'll do is get another text card and put that underneath. And for this one, we'll say, are you looking to buy or sell? So we're prompting the user with a question on this one. And then also we'll add a simple name here. Then with this dot right here, we can drag this out. And what we wanna do is create a listen event for some buttons. So what this will do is it'll ask the question and then prompt the user with the choices. So for this, what we can do is we can enter two different buttons if the user wants to buy or if they want to sell. So now we have our two buttons like this. And what we're also going to do is set some variables. And what we can do is we can use these variables later in our chat bot to kind of customize it and give it a more personalized feel. We can come over to this actions tab here, click on the plus and then click on set variable. So what we'll do is we'll come to apply to and let's create a new variable. So I'll call this, we'll call this one action. So you can type in action and click on create new variable. And what this will do is it'll make the new variable action and we'll set this action to buy and we'll also put it in quotes. It's just kind of a naming convention they have to determine from like, you know, numbers and values versus strings. If you're familiar with coding, this will make sense to you. And once we have that, we can come back and we also need to set the same thing for sell. So we'll add an action, we'll set a variable, but in this time, instead of making a variable, what we can do 
is use the same variable we just set, but instead we'll set this to sell. So what this will do is now when the user clicks on buy, it sets the action variable to buy. And when the user clicks on sell, it sets the action variable to sell. And therefore you can use these variables in a different workflow and have it customized on what the user clicked on previously in the chat box. And then we can just go from here. We have this button here next to the next to the output of the variable and we can drag this and we'll start to create our buy flow. So I'll create another text message here for the chatbot. I'll name this to buy flow and we'll give our first text here. Great. We could totally help you find an amazing home. And then what I also like to do is I'll add in another one and we'll say first, let's get some information so we can find your dream home as soon as possible. And like I mentioned before, you can make this as customized and as personal as you want. You might want to change this up a bit, but this is just an example that kind of help you figure out what you want to do. So to start, I'll ask for what location locations are you thinking about? So we'll go to listen and then we'll go to capture. And what capture is, is, is it lets the user input whatever they want into the text box. And this will make it so the user can give dynamic responses. We can use those dynamic responses to give custom responses from the chatbot back to the user. So it'll make more sense in a second. So before we move on from this, we want to change the variable that is set when the user replies to this question. Right now, the capture is set to the last utterance. What we want to do instead is we'll delete this. Okay, we deleted everything. All right, but well, we're back. We're back. We'll set the variable to by underscore location. And then we'll click on create new variable. And what this will do is that'll set that location to a new variable so we can use it later in our response. What we'll do is we'll move on and we'll start to implement the AI features. So we'll come up to AI here and then we'll click on response AI and we'll name this by flow two. And then what we can do here is we can actually prompt the chatbot with a particular prompt on how we want it to respond. And then it will give back a particular response that it will show in the chatbot. So for this, I've already got this planned out a little bit, but you can do some tweaking around with this prompt if you want to get it fitting with what you want to happen for your business. The prompt that's been working for me is this. Extract the location from this user input on where they would like to live. And the buy location is the variable that we just specified in this buy flow one right here. And then only respond with that result in this format, nothing else. Location, as in the location that it gave, is a great place to move to. So for instance, in the example, when I typed in somewhere in New York, it extracted the text New York and then put that in is a great place to move to. This is kind of how you want to structure it so you can kind of manipulate information and give more personalized feedback to the end user, right? Now that we have that, so then we can respond with this with another text message and we'll prompt it a question. We'll say, and what is your budget for a home? And what we can do is enter in another capture form here and we'll also change the variable and we'll change this to buy underscore budget. And this will also make a new variable that we can use later in our chat bot if we want to. So then we can drag this out. We'll make a new card here. We'll make a text card. We'll name this buy flow three. We'll respond with, I'm positive we can find a house in your budget. And then we'll prompt it with another question. Is there anything you're looking for specifically in a home, amenities, bedrooms, or bathrooms? My dog is sneezing here. What's up, buddy? You doing all right? <laughs> you won't stop sneezing. <laughs> all right, we're back. So once we have this, is there anything you're looking for specifically in a home, amenities, bedrooms, or bathrooms, is we'll prompt the user again with another capture card. What we'll do again is we'll replace the variable last utterance and we'll change this for, we'll change it to buy looking. So kind of like what they're looking for. And we'll create new variable again. And then we can use this new variable in our last step for the buy flow. So we can drag this out again. We'll use AI response AI. And then we have another generative prompt here we can input in. And this, if you remember from the demo, is where it extracted what they're looking for in a home and put it in a list to kind of reiterate what they want. So then I have this prompt I've already tested. You can use the exact same prompt if you want. Extract a relevant list of information from the user input on what they're looking for in a home and respond with a list of their requirements and only say got it after the user input. Then I have the user input right here. Also, something I forgot to mention, but you can actually preview the response. So there's this preview button down here where if you click it, you could type in a value for whatever the user would input in response to this question. 
So let's just say like, we'll say three bedrooms and a finished basement and it responds with requirements. Three bedrooms, finished basement, got it. So you can kind of preview and test what the chatbot is going to say before you actually push this to production on a front end website. If you aren't getting that good of a result, what you can do is come down here to prompt settings and you can actually input in the system here, a more of a specific style of how you want the chatbot to respond to. I played around with this a little bit and it's kind of helped me out. But for this example, you really don't need it because it's kind of simple. But if you're not getting the responses you want, definitely try playing around with this um, and you can maybe try getting it to work a little bit better. But yeah, once we have this, we'll rename this to buy flow for, we have a simple buy sequence built out. So now let's go over to the selling side and this is pretty much the same thing. So I'm going to kind of blow through it. We can drag this out here once again and we'll input another text box. We'll start this off with a sell flow. So I'll input some text here. Great. We know we can get you the best price on your house. And there's another text here. We'll say, first, let's get some information on your home so we can sell it as soon as possible. We'll say, what is the address of the home you are trying to sell? Then once we have that question, we can then use a listen capture form. Then it'll prompt the user to input something in regards to that question. So once again, we'll come here and we'll change this variable. So instead of last utterance, we'll say sell underscore location and we'll create a new variable. Then what we can do is we'll make a new card and that will be a text talk card and we'll name this sell flow two. And then we'll input some more text. We'll say, thanks. What are you looking to sell the property for? Then we'll get another listen capture card, put it underneath it. Then we'll make a new variable sell underscore price and we'll create a new variable now. So then we have that variable set. We can go on to another question. We'll say talk text. That's a great price range. We can totally find a buyer with that. What I want to implement and something you can definitely do. You can actually use that address and use that price that the user gave you and then kind of do like an API request to, to Google Maps or some other kind of service and kind of do a mini price calculation to see if that's correct and actually give a more accurate response than that's a great price range. Um, we definitely can work with that. Maybe do something like that's a bit steep, but we know we can get you that. So just kind of set the expectations of whoever's using your chatbot a little bit better. Just something to think about. But for now, we'll just go with this. So so then we can prompt the user with another question. And what is your timeline for selling your home? So you can get more information about whether the seller is in a hurry to sell their home or not. And we'll use another listen capture card at the bottom here. And then we will give a new variable and then we'll name this sell underscore timeline and we'll create that new variable. Oh, we'll also name this to sell flow three. Now what I want to do is kind of combine these. So it always captures the user's information. And then so there's a final endpoint to actually send that information to like a CRM system or maybe like an email or something um, just to kind of follow up with the user and let your sales teams know that there is a new lead in the pipeline. So then what we can do is we'll drag out another box and we will make another talk text box. We'll do a new response. We'll say, thanks for all that information. We'll also make another text box here and we'll say, can you please give me your first and last name? And then like, and then this is like the same thing before with the cell flow, except now we're getting the user's first and last name. So then we can use a listen capture card here, change the variable from last utterance to name, create new variable. Then we can move on from that and we'll make a new text and we'll say, thanks. And what's a good phone number to reach out to you. And then we'll use listen capture again. And we'll change for this from last utterance to phone, create new variable. Then we can go down here again, talk text and we'll say thanks. And what's a good email for you. And then once again, listen, capture, change the variable from last utterance, change that to email and create new variable. Now, we have our information here. What we also want to happen is when the user is done with this buy flow or this sell flow, this then dumps the user back into this content here. So then what I like to do is after we have all the relevant information. So if we're, if we have a seller or a buyer, we have all the information we need from them at the very end, what we'll do is we'll then prompt the user what the next steps in this sales process is going to look like. So we'll hit them with a talk text card. We'll say, great. A team member will reach out with you shortly to get started on helping you. 
you. And then we can even add another one in here and we'll close it with thanks for choosing Modern Home Realty. So we're letting the user know that someone's going to reach out to them soon and then we're thanking them for spending the time to put in their information into our chat bot. And this is kind of like the main structure of the chat bot, at least the one I created in this example today. But you can get really fancy with this. In my initial example, I actually had this um, a little bit more modified so it actually kind of responds to whatever prompt flow you chose here. So what you can actually do to implement something like this to make it a little bit more customized at the very end is actually use these action variables we set up here at the top for this question in our final message down here. So if you had some different variables here, for instance, you could say like team member will reach out with you shortly to get started on helping you buy your house or helping you sell your house. I want to actually come back to our questions box up here and then on this set action to buy we can also click on add set here and this will, what this will do is let us choose another variable to set while we set this action variable so I want to name this one action two and what we can do is set this to is we'll actually set this to find your dream home and we can do the same thing for the other one so then we'll go to sell add set find a variable we'll use the same variable because it will change determining on which one they click on so we'll use action two we'll say sell your home fast and of course add the quotations around it and there we go so now we have this variable that also gets set when the user clicks on buy or sell and we can use this in our message over here you can use a curly bracket it'll pull up all the variables action two exclamation point so I just to make this so just to make sure this is clear we'll say get started on get started on finding your dream home selling your home fast so now they're worded a bit more accurately to the prompt that we're going to give so then it will say great a team member will reach out with you shortly to get started on finding your dream home or selling your home fast something like that right but then that's pretty much the workflow on the user end and then what you can do after this is make another box here and we can set some dev API logic to actually send an API request to either a sales channel or do an email. So what you can do from here is maybe set like a automation to go to Zapier and Zapier then emails that client kind of like a, hey, thanks for taking the time to reach out with us. We'd love to get in touch. Then it also sends an automatic API call to your sales guys. That pings your sales guys in, your, in a Slack group chat or something to reach out to the new client. Then that time from when the client signs up to the chat bot to when they get first contact with an actual human is very small, which increases the chances that you can convert that client and actually turn it into a paying referral customer that keeps coming back every time they want to buy or sell a home. That's kind of the process with this. But this is pretty much the basic outline of how you can do something really simple, but create an amazing user experience to really get their foot in the door working with your company if they don't know who you are at all. And then, like I said, you can go down here, you can take this wherever you want, implement it to whatever your sales process looks like and extract all the information like the name, phone number, email, um, price, the sell time. You can have some logic set up to, okay, if they are selling, it goes to some of your seller's agents or if if you're buying, it goes to some of your buyer's agents, things like that, right? You can get super detailed with this. This is basically the entire chatbot that I want to show you guys. Also, if you want to test this chatbot out, you can come up here to the run button and it will do a test run inside of VoiceFlow here for you. So you can click on test run and you can go through here and make sure it works correctly how you intend it to. And then once everything works nicely, you can come up to share prototype and you can copy the link and you can send this to a client and make sure it's working the way you want. And this is how it works when you send it to a client. Pretty nice, pretty clean, and it's pretty easy to use and test. And what I'll do, just because I like you guys a lot, I'll have a free download where you can get this exact chatbot. You can use it for your business. And the only cost to you is that you smash that like button and subscribe for more content like this. And as I mentioned before, you can follow the tutorial if you want to build it yourself or if you want a more custom solution for your business, please reach out to me and I can help you build whatever kind of chatbot you want to start converting more leads into paying customers, automating everything so it takes less time, less work, you make more money, it's a win-win. But if you've built a chatbot and have no website to put your chatbot on, you can check out this video here where I show you step-by-step -step how you can build a custom, amazing looking AI automated website from scratch. You can do it in a couple hours by following along with me. You can send all your clients over there. You can implement your chatbot right into your website to turn your prospects into paying customers. So I'll see you guys over in that video.